as we look upon this gospel passage this morning, we can see Jesus giving us a very significant teaching. Let's look at the setting. The setting is the synagogue. The time frame is the Sabbath. And the scripture that was being proclaimed was from the book of Isaiah. Very common things back then. On the Sabbath, they would gather together in the synagogues and they would pray and they would read from the scripture. The one scripture they read from the most was the book of Isaiah. And this is exactly what Jesus was doing, except he did one thing differently. He took Isaiah's prophecy and he made it his own, which is, of course, what would be his mission. What did he say? He took the words of Isaiah and he proclaimed, basically, this is what I have come to do. And he mentions four things. He mentions the poor. He mentions the captives. He mentions being oppressed. He mentions being blind, okay? And I've come for them. The question is, what does he mean? I can bring, I can set the captives, I can liberate the captives. I can give sight to the blind. I can alleviate oppression. All these wonderful things, but whom and what was he referring to? And that is where the teaching is. For when we first look at the word poor, we may say, Jesus has come to help those who are less fortunate than, than let's say, us, or back then, the, the average person. So the physical sense of poorness. What about another way of looking at it? I have come for the poor in spirit. Now it makes a very profound teaching. The poor in spirit. Well, who are the poor in spirit? I've come to give them freedom. I have come to help them alleviate whatever it is that is creating a situation in their lives which is terribly uncomfortable. They are placed in a position that they feel that they are completely surrounded. There is no way out and they are losing hope. People do that. There are people out there who indeed, the situation, whatever it is that's going on in their personal lives is becoming very significant. So much significant that they feel closed in, and that there's no way out. And how do I get out of this? And I cannot see any way out of this. And so I'm beginning to lose hope that I will ever recover. What about that? What is that poor in spirit? I have come to set them free. I have come to bring them glad tidings. I have come and I can show them the way out of their predicament. I can be present for them, ministering to them, and show them how it is that they can be free, that they can be a hope-filled person once again. Incredible challenge. But then Jesus says, I've come to set the captives free, or to liberate the captives, okay? One first thinks of captives as those who are being, being in, for some reason, for whatever, freedoms are being sort of like uh, taken away. I've come to liberate, I've come to free them. Well, okay, what does that mean, Jesus? I've come to liberate those who are imprisoned within themselves. I have come to set you free from you. I can liberate you. Wow, what are you talking about? What is it in some in which whatever the situation might be, it is so closing in on me that I have become a prisoner to that. I can't get out of it. No matter where I go, there it goes with me. Will it ever end? I have become a prisoner to myself. I have become, I am prison and I put myself 
in it. I can't let go. I don't know what freedom is. And Jesus says, I can liberate you. I can give you your freedom. Trust in me. Turn it over to me. And you will be free. And you'll be happy once again. Wow. What a promise. What a promise. I can make the blind see, or give sight to the blind, excuse me. All right, what does he mean here? Well, sure, we have definitely individuals who are physically blind, and we know for a fact the many miracles that Jesus has performed throughout the Gospels, he does indeed give sight to the blind, physical sight. But many of the evangelists have seen this blindness as another little twist to it. Not so much the physical blindness, but the spiritual blindness of unbelief. What do they mean by that? Well, especially John does this a lot. He uses the word blind in reference to unbelief. Those who are non-believers, those who don't have any faith whatsoever, especially in the Son of God, they are blind to faith. Jesus says, I can give you sight. What does he mean? I can give you that conversion from unbelief to belief. Look upon me, see what I have done. Open your hearts and know that I am who I claim I am. I am the Son of God and believe in me. And when you do that, you will be, you can see. See with the eyes of faith. That's what that means. Seeing with the eyes of faith. And those who cannot are blind to that faith, are blind to faith, period. But once they open up their hearts and allow Christ to pour inside, then their sight, that is to say, they believe. They now have faith. And for those who are oppressed, the final part of Jesus' four parts to his mission is to free the oppressed. This is not only dealing with the collect individuals, but collectively. Remember what's going on in Rome at that time. Or excuse me, Israel at that time. They're under deep oppression by the Romans, and they are becoming very, losing their freedoms. Every day another freedom is taken away. Jesus says to the collective people of Israel, I have come to show you how to live through this oppression. Basically, I have come to show you how to live under the Roman oppression. And you'll be, in the midst of all that, you'll have happiness. Wow. Four parts of his ministry, clearly defined, clearly stated in today's gospel passage from Luke, and it's all there, isn't it? What is required to have this freedom, this liberty, this wonderful things he promises? That's simply trust. Trust. Trust in him who is the Son of God. Trust in him who can liberate us from whatever it is that is oppressing us, that whatever it is that is holding us down, that whatever it is that is not allowing us to be truly free. All we need to do is trust, believe, and turn it over to him. Let our Lord God in all his grace and all his love set us free.